this is part two of a one year review of my business as a independent director of photography, working as an owner operator, going out mostly on one, two, three day shoots, providing a, a package rate for my services. So in the previous video, I went over the gear that I ended up purchasing last year and what I think my plans are for this coming year. In this follow up, I'll go over some of the financial planning side of the business as well as my personal finances. Closed out my 25th year being an independent media professional. That worked out to 113 days worked last year of paid billable days. So whether it be travel, a paid prep day, or actual production days. Now that I've relocated to South Texas in a small market, I'm in San Antonio. Um, it's not like the bulk of my career where I was in uh, the LA market and I could do a whole lot of local work. And then if it was travel, it could certainly bill a premium because it was taking me out of the rotation to work locally. Like even a, a one day shoot in another city would take you out of the calendar for basically the whole week in LA. So I'd have to kind of price accordingly. And then just for to recap, 128 days worked in 2022. Only 100 days worked in 2021. Now, I didn't include in 21 any travel days where I was not getting compensated. And I, I clocked a lot of days driving and flying back to Southern California in 2021 just to fill obligations on projects I had agreed to prior to relocating. For perspective, my peak year in production days came in at right around 190 days, and that was back in 2008. Peak years for me came in at between 180 and 190 days. I have a few years like that over the past 25, and I don't ever want to repeat that. It just too physically and emotionally exhausting. Really took a toll on my family and my health. And I think the sweet spot is uh, right where I'm at now, like between 100 and maybe 130 days. And as I touched on in the previous vlog, I'd be totally content to come in at 113 days this coming year. Last year's sales breakdown, the top two customers in total billings represented 50% of the revenue and the bottom 50% came from 19 additional customers. The number one customer last year represented just under 32% of total sales and the last time my number one customer exceeded about 21% of sales was 2012. A previous vlog I put together my top clients in freelance video production back in November of 2019. I went through a similar breakdown of sales by customer over three years. 2015 as an example, my top client represented only 17% of the total revenue and the number two position came in at about 11 or 12%. And over that three year sample rate, no one customer represented more than about 20% of sales and total customers build over those years was approximately 50 unique customers per calendar year. What happened last year? Why such a hit? Well, if I break down my revenue, 50% of sales came from traditional corporate media production and the other 50% came from broadcasting cable television. The item that was missing for me last year is commercial work. So I view commercial as like your traditional 30 or 60 second ad selling a product or a brand or also including long form. So your direct response shows that are 30 or 60 minutes. Here's the upsetting piece for me, although it's not a surprise. So if I take my sales data, which I have readily accessible in QuickBooks back to 2006, and I, I take the total sales from the PNL, and then I go out to the US government's Bureau for Labor and Statistics inflation calculator, which they change the formula every couple of years to suit whichever administration's in charge at the time. But for the most part, historically, they appear to downplay how severe inflation is, not just even in the last like 12 months, but over however many years they've been running the, the metric. It's not a fixed formula. So much to say that like inflation is quite a bit higher than what the BLS considers it to be. But using the low BLS inflation numbers, I put in all my income years. Adjusted for inflation, 2023 is my smallest year in business. So my business is quite a bit different than five years ago. I'm not actively chasing business. I'm reacting. Phone rings. I say yes. I put together an estimate, juggle the calendar, and I still go out and work, but uh, I'm not at the level of hustle I was five years ago. 
the big hit was not being in the commercial world and plugged into the agency work. I think a lot of that is just the taper effect of proximity. When I was in Southern California, I had those relationships. And when I moved to South Texas, that was coming out of the pandemic. And a lot of the commercial production was happening outside of New York and California. So I benefited from those existing agency relationships, but now things have all pivoted back to being produced back in, in California. Um, second, I don't have a significant amount of revenue from equipment only rentals where in my banner years in Southern California, it would get close to 50% of my total sales was gear rental. I had consignment relationships going with multiple rental houses, camera gear parked up in Los Angeles, grip and lighting gear and a truck at a rental company. So on the business side, I'm just not spinning as many plates of business services. And as a result, my life is much lower stress. Also being in a smaller market, it would be more difficult trying to consign and manage rentals in say Dallas or Los Angeles from, from afar. Now, all those years of cash flow that came in from the equipment rental side, I didn't inflate my lifestyle in those lucrative years. Instead, I took all of those profits and reinvested them in sort of traditional assets, the stock market, and I've got some rental property, single family homes here in locally in San Antonio. And I've been self-managing those houses for a few years, so that does take up a little bit of my time, but it's not like renting gear where I have to be engaged every for every rental day. There's some bookkeeping, admin, maybe a pickup and delivery involved of my own personal time. Instead, you know, I get a maintenance call every couple of months. I'll do it myself if I'm available, but uh, if I'm out on a production, I can just send a contractor to do the work and then just collect and rent. Most people are on auto pay, but I occasionally do have to drive and knock on doors and collect late payments. And I'm sharing all of this because really this, I think is just sort of the next chapter in a career arc, you know, after I'm now in the 46 this year and my body's kind of tired. I just can't run at the pace I used to, even though I think I'm more fit now than I was in my twenties. And a few of my mentors, when I was first starting out, got into the real estate game, self-managing, just a few houses, California, one was uh, Nashville, and another one, Las Vegas. Incidentally, the ones that seemed to do the best at it were on the sound side of the career versus camera. It seems like the camera folks end up burning all their profits, reinvesting in the camera business, where the sound people, the gear turnover isn't as rapid, and they can reinvest in other verticals. So I'm very grateful that a few of those people shared their business knowledge with me and, and that I managed to listen to them to some extent. And I'm hopeful that some of the people watching my videos will, will do the same. I've grown a bigger community of vloggers in the, the media, you know, independent director photography space, but it seems like most of the folks are a little bit earlier in their careers than me. And they're focused on building a personal brand, getting bigger, sexier bookings, and once you get the momentum established and repeat clients, you don't have to put that effort in. And instead, I think it's wise to reinvest in some traditional investments. So ultimately, what we're doing is a very physically demanding job. And if your health situation changes as you age, you got to be prepared to uh, find some income and cash flow elsewhere. My business goals for this year, just very similar to last year. I'd like to average out to six to eight production days a month knowing that I'll have months where I only do one or two days and then I'll have a, a 15 day month. But I really don't want to get back in situations where I'm working 20 days in a month. Although I have trouble saying no, if a job comes in, that's interesting to me. I know I'm going to fall back on to just saying yes. I don't think I'll be doing a rate increase this year. I'm pretty happy with where I landed last year, despite the fact that wages are not tracking with the inflation rates. I'm setting aside funds to purchase my next camera, probably going to be a Burano this year. I Within QuickBooks, you can create a sub account. So in my business savings, I've set up a sub account and each month I'm going to move over proceeds to start accumulating the purchase price for that body and minimal accessories, as well as uh, planning to sell a few cameras 
I'd like to do more ENG and live shots. I mentioned that in the previous video. Uh, while the day rate is not as lucrative as a multi-camera corporate day and certainly not compared to commercial days, I like that instant satisfaction of direct to air and same day deadlines on packages. They tend to be multiple day bookings where you're starting fresh each day. So get to build the momentum and get a little bit better each day. I started in that world 20 years ago and it's been a lot more enjoyable having a break from it and now being back in it. Plus, it seems to be one of those sides of the media business where the older, more experienced people tend to land. I'm still looking at folks that are 10, 20 years ahead of me that are just happily doing remotes, ENG packages. And I want to do more magazine shows, Today Show type of work or Dateline where it's a um, three camera, four camera sit down interviews and structured, almost storyboarded B-roll where you're doing reenactments documentary style. On the real estate investment side, I have a home equity line of credit I use to invest and improve a couple of my rentals. That's a variable interest rate. It was 18 months ago, it was like a three and a half, four percent rate. Today it's 8.5%. And for the past 12 months, I've been aggressively paying down that balance instead of maintaining a, a larger operating cash reserve on my personal bookkeeping side, because it's a line of credit, I can always draw from it if I have a shortfall. Assuming the credit doesn't get frozen, which happened to me in 2008, 2009, when the real estate market crashed. But anyway, I wanna kill off that loan this year. It's going to take me probably 10 or the all 12 months of this year. Coming out of the pandemic and the eviction moratoriums are now fortunately a thing of the past. I've got the rental portfolio to the point where I've got enough cash flow to cover our basic personal expenses per month. I'm not actively saving in any specialized retirement savings. Instead, I've been putting proceeds now for 11 years directly into real estate, which has some tax advantages that have worked out better for me than a traditional IRA 401k. And the longer term plan next couple of years is to get the real estate portfolio and other passive investments to totally cover our personal existence month to month. Well, the real estate is certainly not passive. The, the amount of management time I have to put into it is far less than managing and investing in new equipment. What are your business plans for this year and what kind of investing are you doing short term and long term? Let's continue that discussion in the comments below.